Welcome to Brightcast. Thank you for downloading. My name is Renee Stowe of rainbowbright.co.uk. And I'm Katie Carty Hiley of rainbowbright.net. Thank you very much for tuning in again to Brightcast, the Rainbow Bright podcast. This is episode number nine for July 2014. We're sorry we've been gone for so long, but we have returned. My bad. <laughs> we have returned with lots of news for you. Lots and lots. Yeah. First things first, Renee has taken time out of her busy schedule to create a new website for Brightcast. Why don't you tell us about it, Renee? Yay! All right. So with the new website, I decided that we should probably get some more ways of interacting with you guys. So if you go to thebrightcast.com, because we are the Brightcast, the Rainbow Bright Podcast, <laughs> You can, you'll see all of the past episodes. You can stream the episodes online or download them. You'll also see links to the videos that are available for the video portions of podcasts and links to show notes and uh, other things that we discuss. Also, on each episode, you'll have an option of commenting on uh, Facebook directly on the website or sharing it on Pinterest or Twitter. Uh, we're also going to be doing our best to archive our own collections here so make sure to check out the gallery anytime that we will add a picture of something from our collection some information about it and that too can also be shared on pinterest facebook or twitter and i don't know what else to say <laughs> <laughs> it's a very snazzy new site so check it out thanks renee you're welcome and next <laughs> thank you um Next, we're going to tell you guys about some new merchandise that has come out. I think in the last episode or last couple, we've mentioned some t-shirts and so forth coming out in Mexican Walmarts, and they keep churning them out, and I'm still jealous. Um, they've come out with a couple more shirts and pajamas. I believe these are just for small children. With the first t-shirts, they were big enough for like uh, teen ages, young adult. Um, so if you got the biggest size, usually an adult could wear them. I actually was able to find a fan in Mexico that picked up those first four shirts for me, uh, the purple, pink, teal, and red one um, ones. And they do fit. I got, you know, the biggest size, which was either extra large or 14, 16, something like that. Um, I mean, they're snug, like you would expect, but they are wearable by adults. Um, so if you can get your hands on some, do it. And hopefully, like I keep saying, eventually, maybe they'll come here. Hint, hint, Hallmark, please. <laughs> One other thing that we discovered was on GameStop. If anybody out there has a GameStop rewards plan, they have a new plan called the Power Up, where you take in all your old games or buy new games and you get so many points towards your purchases or trade-ins. With your Power Up points, you can actually get a rainbow bright mini backpack with the striped rainbow colors where it's her print with rainbow across it. Yeah, it's really cute. I did not have a GameStop account, so I had to turn to the eBay. Uh, but thankfully, someone was selling one there and I was able to, to snag one. But I don't think I've seen any more show up yet. I'm hoping eventually some people will, you know, cash in a few extra points and get extras to sell off online. So check there if you don't have a GameStop account. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure how to get your hands on one. <laughs> the mini backpack costs 7,500 <laughs> points. Yeah, I don't know what that translates to and to dollars spent necessarily. No. But you could probably look it up on their site. Yeah, and that's Power Up Rewards points from GameStop. All right, moving on to other information. Oh, I, we want to thank our Brightcast listeners. Thank you for commenting online and mentioning us. We actually discovered a Rainbow Bright podcast fan on YouTube who her name is Armanga, A-R-M-A-N-G-A -A -A, on YouTube. And she is, uh, she grew up watching Rainbow Bright in Arabic. Uh, there is a Rainbow Bright theme song in Arabic, if you didn't know that. It's so cool. And she has translated the lyrics into English for us. 
Um, so thank you very much, our manga, for uh, letting us know that you are a bright cast fan and for being so kind as to translate that theme song. Yes, thank you so, so much. It still amazes me how much information we still don't know about to this day. And truly, it's fans like you guys that clue us in because some stuff you just you would never think to look for. Who would know to search Rainbow Bright Arabic? You know? <laughs> but that's so cool to know that it existed and that it's still around, that we can actually listen to it and get the translation. So, yeah. Please keep sending us in that that cool information that we may otherwise never know. Another bit of information that we also found out was there. Katie posted about this on the Rainbow Bright forums years ago. When you get the foreign DVDs of the Rainbow Bright set, the ones from Britain, there's this kid that shows up at the very beginning of the promos of every episode, and we don't know who it yes. was. Yes, it was so annoying. <laughs> like who is this kid because he kind of looked like one of the characters from the littles mm -hmm. but it wasn't so for years and years we've been wondering and finally renee has found the answer i did some looking online uh always trying to find out some new room for right information and luckily a youtuber called in sans posted a bunch of commercials and in between those commercials was a promo for rainbow bright from kiddio tv it included this kid. It was a commercial of a, a kid sitting down to watch Kiddio. So that's where the kid comes from. It's from the Kiddio promo. The Kiddio promo also showed up in the 2004 Star Sprinkled DVD that was given out with the dolls because I have a copy and I put it in there and you saw next Rainbow Bright and it shows Rainbow Bright jumping through a television screen. That is also the Kiddio promo. It's the ah. same promo, only one, the European one cut out the TV part and just had the kid, you know, looking up with the, whoa, those goggles or sunglasses? On yeah, top. they look like goggles to me. <laughs> and then you had, uh, there was supposed to be Rainbow Bright and Starlight animated to be jumping out of the television screen. So the American one, we got the TV screen, Britain got the kid. And they were both for the same promo. That is so cool. Another mystery solved, thanks to Renee. Woohoo! That makes me excited. Because <laughs> literally, that has bugged us for years. <laughs> yeah, ever since we saw the promo. Because I, too, was like, is it from the Littles? Because it looked like the same yeah. animation style. Totally. And now we know. And knowing is half the battle. And for those who didn't know... Um, Kiddio TV, which I don't think it was really involved with Deke or Saban Entertainment. Uh, the DVDs that you can find out now are of the Littles and Heathcliff and all these same shows that were done along with Rainbow Bright are now called Cookie Jar. Uh, so Cookie Jar Entertainment is who now has the Deke catalog. But they, they have Rainbow Bright, but they still have not released Rainbow Bright on disc, even though it's part of the Cookie Jar catalog. Sad face. What else have they released? Do you uh, remember? Well, recently I got the Get Along Gang. Uh, I found the Get Along Gang at, I think it was Toys R Us in one of their bargain bins. Um, and it includes a few episodes of Get Along Gang. And uh, a few years ago, I was able to get the Littles. And, of course, they have Heathcliff and Inspector Gadget. And also Inspect Gadget Jr. I don't know this one. This is, this is supposed to be like... What? Yes, Gadget Jr. It's supposed to be like a little kid Mr. Gadget. I no. <laughs> oh, my word. That sounds hilarious. <laughs> but the, the DVDs that have been released, that have been released over in Europe... Um, have been through I remember oh that. Jetix. Jetix. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jetix I thought was part of Disney. Um but we're gonna get into that discussion here <laughs> in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Evil maniacal <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Evil maniacal laugh. Evil maniacal laugh. Okay, moving on. <laughs> So, should we get into the art show? Yay! Yes. Cool! Okay, so so this happened. 
Um, (laughs) It was kind of out of the blue and like, what? And awesome. And I want to go all at the same time. So here's what happened. This was back in April. Uh, Hallmark headquarters, which is in Kansas City, Missouri, put together a Rainbow Bright exhibit for her 30th anniversary Because, you know, the copyright was 1983, but the show and the dolls actually premiered in 1984. Mm -hmm. So technically, this is her 30th anniversary year. And the exhibit was designed to provide inspiration for their their, uh, creative employee teams. And it was shown to the employees in their ninth floor gallery. Now, this is not open to the public, or was not. I'm not sure if it's even still up because it's, you know, this was a few months ago now. But thankfully, a good friend of ours and a big fan of Rainbow Bright is related to a Hallmark employee, and he was able to take a tour of the exhibit and take some pictures and video for us, because he's awesome. <laughs> so Justin Perryman, thank you so much uh, for cluing us into to what was going on and actually showing it to us, because even if we could go to Kansas City, Missouri, which is kind of far from where either of us live. We wouldn't be able to get in. Anyway, so yeah, it, it starts out with, I mean, they actually made a poster. They call it the Rainbow Bright 30th Anniversary Art Show. Uh, it's not just artwork, but but that's kind of what they labeled it as. It starts out with a bunch of merchandise. So a lot of this is stuff we had seen before. You know, some of it's vintage. Most of it is, is newer mm-hmm. from the 2000s up. Um, but several items we had never seen before. So these are either prototypes or samples, you know, things that might be coming out in the future, like the GameStop mini backpack Mm -hmm. was actually pictured here back in April, even though it didn't come out for sale or through GameStop until recently. So some of the stuff we may still see in the future, which I hope. (laughs) So there's clothing, there's backpacks. They actually had some custom dolls. I think there's, these are the Blythe dolls. Is yes. that correct? Yeah, Blythe. Uh, I guess they just took the outfits basically from the 2009 Rainbow Bright dolls and put them on there. Um, but they're super cute. And they put up little marquees and rainbow tutus and stuff just to set it off. They did a really, really good job of, of setting it up. I'm trying to think what else was new in here. The Twink hats, or Sprite hats. It wasn't just Twink. There's Twink and a, and a Lucky sprite hat which they're adorable you've got like the face and they're fuzzy with the fuzzy ball hanging down and the stars on top and then they had some vintage books play sets etc now in the second part there was well no there was more stuff um, <laughs> <laughs> there were several sections to this it, it, it all runs together when i haven't seen it in person but the second section had other types of merchandise other than dolls and clothes and things like that. Um, it had books, some DVDs. They had a, a snow globe that's actually different than the snow globe that we bought back in Hot Topic back in the day. It's got a darker blue base to it. It says Rainbow Bright. I believe the inside is the same. Hold on, let me click on that and look. Actually, no, Mm-mm. I don't think it is. Okay, it's a completely different snow globe. <laughs> My bad than the one that was actually sold and released. So again, was that a prototype from back when they made the one we know and love and they just never made those? Or is that one that's going to be coming out? We don't know. Also of interesting note to me, there is the Rainbow Bright Collectors set, DVD set of all the episodes, which is a total bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> that is not official at all. But they have it and it's in their display. So maybe that's giving it their blessing. I, I don't know. I'm still hoping they're going to come out with an official one at some point. Knock on wood. Well, I was looking at a picture, one of these pictures here. Uh It says that the snow globe was an unauthorized snow globe. (laughs) Unauthorized? (laughs) Unauthorized. But it's in the same shot as the storyboard picture. They actually have a page here of storyboards from the animated series in 1984, which shows the storyboards for Mighty Monster Mark Menace. And I'm drooling over this because I love promo material. And so this stuff I was like, I want, uh, but, right? Right. <laughs> but I like the storyboards. It's, it's good to see, you know, how they wanted the show to be based on what the storyboard was based on what you saw. Yay. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Storyboard art is, is a really cool thing. It's obviously more of a rough draft than the animated cells. 
in the end product, but and I've seen you know storyboard art for other cartoons such as He-Man and She-Ra where it'll be different. Like they they were planning to do this one scene or planning to do it a certain way, and then the end it didn't work and they had to go a different direction. But you still get to see the original intention and yeah, or deleted scenes so to speak. So storyboard art can be really telling and really really interesting. Um, so yeah, as part of this left us just going, oh, please, can we get our hands on it and just flip through it, <laughs> if nothing else? Um, so it's wonderful and, and frustrating at the same time. Uh, <laughs> and they had, yeah, some promos, some books, the comic from the Star Stealer movie, uh, a notebook, you know, we hadn't seen before with the character names in different languages. Um... One that I have that I see here is the Rainbow Bright publication, which was a newsletter just about Rainbow Bright, which I think was probably given out internally. I don't know. I've never seen this and I want it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love how Starlight only has red and yellow hair in that picture. <laughs> it's like McDonald's version Starlight. <laughs> yep. Actually, Rainbow Bright's colors are a little bit off there as well, so... But yeah, yeah, super, super cool stuff that we've never laid our eyes on before. And then they had fan art, which it's kind of interesting to me to call it fan art when it's actual employees of Hallmark. It feels more official that way. But since they're not actually doing anything or selling anything with it yet anyway, I guess it still falls under the fan art category at this point. But it, it's, it's some really cool takes on the Rainbow Bright character. I mean, some of these remind me of ones I've seen before on DeviantArt or so forth. Mm -hmm. But many of them are brand new interpretations as well. Uh, a couple of them are a little odd. <laughs> I think we both went, hmm? yeah. um, but But for the most part, they're actually really, really cute um, and interesting takes on, on Rainbow Bright. I like the one by Peter Martin, which is uh, one of the first ones that you see on your list there. It kind of reminds me of between Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Uh, it's <laughs> so cute. And these are uh, promos of what it uh, prints and stuff would look like on shirts. And I'm just here going, I want them all. And they included a Stormy. I, they did! Oh my gosh! I just noticed that! <laughs> You can see I was in such a hurry to share this. I just didn't even take the time to really put a magnifying glass to these pictures. That's adorable. She almost is holding a, a lightning bolt. <laughs> That's so cute. I love Tickled Pink with her huge pigtails. Uh, and I really want that I love Starlight shirt badly. Stormy has a sprite next to her. See it? Yeah. Well, because they look like the, oh, the Twink oh. sprite, only she it, it looks he or she is purple. Yeah. With white stars. Aww, that's adorable. Yeah, see, Peter, we, we need more. Come on, Peter. <laughs> Give us more. We want all the all the artworks, all the pictures. And then, well, there's two more really interesting things. They also had some big screen TVs up showing videos. Mm -hmm. Now, one of them was a slideshow of pictures of Rainbow Bright fans, basically and fan creations, which I just love, love, love to see that they included that. Because you know, a lot of properties kind of ignore the fandom, even though the fandom is what keeps it going and selling. So it was a really cool shout out to all of us and, and you guys listening that they hear us, they see us, they know we exist. <laughs> and they're really happy that we're keeping the spirit of Rainbow Bright alive. So I was hugely thankful for that. And then, Renee, tell us about the last two videos. The last two videos was, I assume, prototypes or test animations for two Rainbow Bright animated shows. Each is about 30 seconds long. The first one uh, features uh, Rainbow Bright. Murky it has some gloomy looking sprites that actually kind of remind me of Lurky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rainbow Bright. What does it say? Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright and Twink is the title. The promo, you see Murky in the grunge buggy, which is fascinating to see him driving. And he has murked out a whole slew of sprites, and they're turning everything gray. And in comes Rainbow Bright, 
who is very, very cutely animated. Uh, and she's seeing them destroy Rainbow Land. And so she blasts them with a rainbow and turns them back into sprites. The first one, of course, being Twink, which I think is adorable. And it's just called Rainbow, awesome. Bright, and Twink. And that's the only thing that you see of that promo. The second promo kind of reminds me of a mismatch between Supergirl and the Powerpuff Girls or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which is, you see Happy Land and then Gray, and then you see a rainbow shoot across and make everything happy. And in flies Rainbow, and she's flying on her own, and Starlight Twink, an ape and a dog are running. Um, and it's supposed to be the new adventures of Rainbow Bright. Is that an ape or is it like Bigfoot? I know, <laughs> it, it does. Like... It looks like Sasquatch. <laughs> and the dog looks nothing like Poppy Bright. He's just kind of a generic dog. Kind of looks like a dachshund ish. Not quite that long, but. I, I, if we had to pick between the two, I believe both of us lean more towards the first, um, the first style. They're both really cute. But I'm like, where where does a where does Bigfoot come in? I don't understand that one. <laughs> and Twink is almost as big as Rainbow at yeah. the end of that when it shows all the characters together. I, I do like the cape idea with Rainbow Bright and her. I don't know what I feel about her being able to fly on her own. Okay, hold on. I'm not sure if you've read this. Have you read the synopsis of the new adventures of Rainbow Bright at the bottom? I did, but I don't remember what it says. <laughs> Consist, it like consistently foiled by Rainbow Bright, Dr. Dismal, and Lurky give up trying to rule Rainbow Land. There's a secret portal. They travel to Earth, gain new, stronger powers, and begin their evil plans to conquer our planet. Leaving Rainbow Land behind in the good care of the sprites, our hero Rainbow Bright, Starlight, and Twink follow Dr. Dismal and Lurky through the portal to Earth which also gives them incredible new superpowers. Once on Earth, Rainbow Bright makes new friends and together helps protect our planet from the dastardly deeds of Dr. Dismal and other perils. Then begins the new adventures of Rainbow Bright and Friends. Concept by Ralph... I can't pronounce... I can't see the last name. It's blurred. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I don't know what I feel about that. That's got a very Smurfs movie vibe. <laughs> Portal to Earth. Make mayhem. <laughs> Try to fix it. But did they ever go back to Rainbow Land? I mean, I always loved the fact that they were in Rainbow Land most of the time in the series. It was a very idyllic place that I wanted to go to, that I wanted to live in. <laughs> Obviously, can't do that. But I don't know. What do you think? I, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I kind of liked it being in Rainbow Land. And that's one of the things that um, I actually did like about the 2009 Rainbow Bright relaunch was that it appeared to be Rainbow Bright and all the other characters were taking care of Rainbow Land, not so much on Earth, which kind of reminds me of what happened with My Little Pony. Originally in the original series, they went to Earth and found Megan. And now in the new mm-hmm. series, Friendship is Magic, they don't go to Earth at all, don't even know what humans are. And that's which made um, Equestria Girls hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there was this, th- them taking away the human aspect of it also keeps away real world problems, which makes things a little more neutral. Yeah. And I mean, obviously in the series, they did go to Earth on occasion. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine with that. Like, Care Bears did the same thing. They went to Earth to help a small child that's upset by something. And then they went back to Care a lot. But there were also issues that came up in Care a lot that they had to deal with. So I'm fine with a mix, but I don't want it to primarily be on Earth. No. No. No thanks. And I love in the first one how she blasts the sprite with the rainbow. Like... It's kind of in the belt region, so perhaps the color belt is is helping make this sonic rainbow boom that she's making in her hands. I don't know. It's it kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball Z when they just <laughs> harness this power in their hands and blast it away. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, but it was just yeah, this big rainbow comet thing that forms in her hands and then blasts it off. Um, yeah, that was cool. I like that better than a scepter 
like they had in the 2009 Rainbow Bright. Oh my goodness. I'm re-watching the animation, actually, and um, you said th- they changed the color belt in that version. It's not a rainbow anymore. Yeah, it's it, like a star, right? Yeah, it's a star. It does have a rainbow around it, but it reminds me, again, more of the, the 2009 version where it was a rainbow and a star. Yeah. Uh, rather than the rainbow on top okay. of a red belt, which everybody was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I like the, the V collar kind of thing that sticks up on her outfit. That's pretty cute. Oh, yeah. It helps with trying to do the a costume with that. Because trying to do a costume That's true. with the what I refer to as the wings on the sleeves. <laughs> right? Not an easy task. <laughs> and yeah, Tilly turns the sprite rainbow before he collapses down into Twink. Which is adorable. Uh, and the grunge buggy looks practically the same. Mm-hmm. I don't see a, a garbage can on the front or on the side. No, because I guess that's driving. Driving. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Lurky? We need Lurky. Well, that again also backs up the fact that the 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 gloom sprites look like big Lurkies to me. They really do. <laughs> They're not very happy. They they just kind of look like zombie sprites. <laughs> they don't look very. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't like their, like, fangs. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all walking pretty slow and labored, and I can just hear a zombie, like, kind of groan coming out. <laughs> Neither of these have sound, sadly, so we don't know what they're supposed to sound like. It's just video, but it's still pretty cool. One thing from both of these animations is they look like they're both primarily made in Flash, which is what My Little Pony is made in. And it is even what the original 2009 episodes were made in. They were done in Flash. Cool. So yeah, if done well, Flash is okay. I just want to make sure any Rainbow Bright iteration is 2D. None of this CGI 3D-ish looking. I kind of like the new Care Bears style. When they try to make it more realistic looking like this, it just... Well, with, with the Care Bears, I can understand that it would look good uh, because the Care Bear toys will look pretty much with the cartoon. Rainbow Bright's toys never did, and when you try to make them look like it, it never really played off well, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Because, you, again, you go from a 2D image to a 3D image, so it doesn't really work. Not so much. No. Speaking of cartoons, yay! So we have like some super duper 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 exciting news. According to Emily Osmond, there is going to be a new Rainbow Bright cartoon, like soon. Uh, <laughs> so this this is how it went down. Well, on Twitter and also on Instagram because the Twitter linked to the Instagram. Um, she says here. I'll pull it up. Okay, she says, first day on the job. Very stoked to be back doing some animation this summer. See you soon. Love, Emily, a.k.a. Rainbow Bright. And the picture that goes along with that on Instagram has a title. It says, Rainbow Bright, Episode 1, Cloudy with a Chance of Gloom, written by Rachel Vine, Draft 4, May 22nd, 2014. So, but that's all we know. And it's, it's really, really driving us nuts. Because um, we can't find anything on Rachel Vine. We don't know who she is or what else she's written. I'm sure it'll be great, but I would just love to know who she is. Um, we do know a good bit about Emily Osment because she's been acting since she was a kid. I think you've seen her in more things than I have, Renee. I so Emily was Lily on Hannah Montana. Uh, she was also, uh, before that, she did uh, Spy Kids movies, and she did uh, lots of stuff on the Disney Channel. She is an, a Disney Channel actress, or ex-Disney Channel actress. Um, she's <laughs> recently been doing a summer program called Young and Hungry on ABC. Uh, I think it's ABC Family. Yeah, that just came out. That's also part of the 
Disney ABC catalog because Disney and ABC are technically the same company. Um, just different iterations. So is this a Disney show? We don't know. It could be on Spirit Clips. Spirit Clips is Hallmark's new network online that they've started where you can stream family-friendly programming and movies, uh, stuff that's already been released or and original content. So what this is for, we're not sure. And we did have, if I can re- recall correctly, a Hallmark employee tell us a few months back to keep our eyes on spirit clips. Yes. Correct? Yes. So that, at least at the time, I assume that's the direction they were going in. We don't know if that's still the case. Like Rainbow Bright would say. Boy, you've got more questions than colors. Indeed we do. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but I spend a, f- a little bit of time looking up Emily and some of the, the stuff she's done on YouTube. Because she's also a singer. Mm-hmm. She's got a couple of albums out. Um, which makes me hopeful that there will be music involved mm-hmm. in this new show. Because I really love in Star Stealer when there's you know, the kids singing um, and the whole Paint a Rainbow in Your Heart album and the Christmas album. So if they could incorporate some more singing and music, oh, that would be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And her voice is really interesting. Yeah, I, I watched some clips from Hannah Montana and then some clips from her new, her new show, oh, um, oh, Young no. and Hungry. What? Do not go by Lily on Hannah Montana. They actually wrote in that Lily on Hannah Montana was supposed to be a horrid singer. Oh, I didn't hear her singing on <laughs> oh, Hannah Montana. Okay, okay, no. I was just watching her talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> and in the earlier episodes, her her voice was very nasal, nasally to me. Um, but it seemed like the further along in the show it she went, it, that kind of went away. Um, and she developed her voice a little bit more. And then I watched, what was it? I don't know. I watched a couple of clips from things in between and she was coming more into her own. Um, and I watched a couple of interviews from recent years and her normal talking voice is more kind of alto. It's not, a, she doesn't have a high pitched voice that she speaks in all the time. But if you watch some clips from young and hungry or some episodes, you can actually watch them on hulu.com or abcfamily.com or on your local cable station, whatever. Um, if you watch some clips from that, she she talks more high pitch in that show. I don't know if she does all the time. I haven't watched an entire episode. I've just seen clips so far. But she makes lots of jokes because it's it's a comedy. So she's doing a lot of silly stuff and she'll go up into this high register just squeaking, squeaky talking, which is adorable. And she does it really well. So I think the potential of her voice as Rainbow Bright is going to be phenomenal. Um and even just her regular speaking voice, when I, which I saw in one of the interviews, even when it's lower pitch, it still has some cutesy in it, if that makes sense. I think she could go either way. It could be over the top cutesy or it could just be kind of cutesy. It sounds to me like she has a pretty wide range. So I think she'll have no problem tackling this character. It's just going to be interesting to hear what she does with it. Personally, to me, it's going to be interesting to see how Rainbow Bright is going to be portrayed. I mean, is her character in the script going to be, for example, I, I'm going to use My Little Pony as an example. You have the very studious Twilight Sparkle, but then you have the happy Pinkie Pie. You know, who, who who's yeah. who's she going to be like? And to me, Rainbow Dash kind of reminds me of Stormy, you know, the more gruffer mm-hmm. um, style. Uh, so... That's just a comparison uh, for those who are curious of what I meant. But I don't know how Rainbow is going to be portrayed. I mean, she was always known to be a very hardworking little girl who took care of color. So, Like, to me, I was thinking about it the other day. And, you know, in our fandom theories, we've kind of, at this point, we kind of think the color kids are timeless and that, the wearer of the color belt changes over the years. Um, the color kids to me seem more childlike. Like, I mean, obviously they look like children, but they also rely on the wearer of the belt very heavily. You know, she tells them what to do. She tells them where to go. Um, I mean, they're somewhat self-reliant, but when they're in a jam, they wait around for her to rescue them for the most part. So I'm hoping that this Rainbow Bright character will also 
be that strong, a little bit more mature than the other kids type personality. Um, I mean, obviously Rainbow Bright had her weak moments as well, where she would get murked out and feel hopeless. Um, and the color kids at that point could help bring her, her brightness back, bring her mm -hmm. sparkle back. Um, so I'm kind of hoping it'll be the same dynamic. I mean, they weren't such little kids that they were like little toddlers screaming and crying and throwing temper tantrums. At, but just that she was the leader, but not in a bad way, because you can have mm -hmm. dictator type leaders and we, we certainly don't want that. But yeah, I think Rainbow was always great at treating the color kids as equals while at the same time, you know, being their friend, but also being their leader and taking responsibility for what was going on in Rainbow Land which is a lot for a little girl to do, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> but that's what makes her special. Recently, I was actually going over the original Strawberry Shortcake, uh, who that character was five years old and was very, she cried a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they forgot my birthday. What? <laughs> um. And Rainbow was visually about the same size. Because you remember compared to Brian, she was so small. And uh -huh. so to me, she was, she had more of an alpha personality. Yeah. Yeah. But That's then again, put it. Red Butler also had, he was the leader of the color kids. Yes. And Twink was a leader of the sprites. And Rainbow ruled them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One rainbow to root them up. <laughs> One rainbow to root them up. No, but uh, you also had Moon Glow. Though Moon Glow did what Rainbow said. Tickle Pink did what Rainbow said. Stormy, uh-uh. Don't tell us Storm what to do. No. <laughs> <laughs> she marched to the beat of her own drum, for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> See, I hope they'll keep up that interesting dynamic, too, where there will be some butting of heads, um, some power struggles. But in the end, they're all friends. They're all, you know, working towards the same goal, trying to keep things bright and beautiful and keep Murky in check. Uh, <laughs> I really hope that Murky is still a part of this. I mean, they could stick the evil queen in there if they want to, but it's somehow it wouldn't be rainbow bright to me without Murky, I don't think. And Lurky. Kind of lurky. Well, and Lurky, yes. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, I agree. The last one iteration from 2009 tried to introduce more of the evil princess which i like the dark princess um i think that that would have been an interesting uh thing to see an arch enemy come back but when mm -hmm. it comes to villains on rainbow bright we've gone through it there's really not that many so i'm wondering what new villains we could be dealing with yeah you know what would be interesting mm -hmm. is you know, there was at least one episode, maybe more, in the He-Man series where a new baddie came to Eternia and was so bad that He-Man and Skeletor had to team up together to conquer them. I'd love to see something like that happen in Rainbow Bright. Because there have been, like at the end of, I think it's Horse of a Different Color, where they make Murky and Lurky throw flowers in the parade as punishment for being a jerk. Um so they've they've obviously had times where they've had to, you know, put their differences aside for a little while and be nice to each other, at least tolerate each other. Um, but they've never had to work together. So I'd love to see something where a really, really bad person comes around and, you know, they both have to pull their their resources. And who knows with this title, you know, Cloudy with a Chance of Gloom, that could that could mean all sorts of things. And I, I like the play on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs because that's a really cute movie. Um, I just, we're so curious. <laughs> it's driving us crazy. Like, who are the other voice actors going to be? There's so many options out there. And I, I, mean, I think I understand why they probably didn't go with Bettina again, even though she's still super talented. She doesn't have that childlike voice anymore. And I think it would be a struggle for her to get that higher register um, back in practice if she hasn't been keeping it up. You know, some women, they just have a really high voice their entire lives. But I think hers has lowered over time. Um, although it'd be great if she at least had some kind of cameo, even if it was a, as a different character. That'd be cool. She could be Lady Bright. You know, the, the sphere of light character that watches over all. Um, or, you know, 
I doubt they can bring Peter Cullen back as Murky because he's so in demand these days with Transformers. Um, I'd love it, obviously, but I, I imagine <laughs> he's a pricey actor to get on board these days. Um, I don't know. Do you have any, do you have like a dream team of voice actors? Well, my, I'm curious to know whether or not they're going to be casting boys because in the original series, uh, the boys were cast were by voice by both men and women. Mona Marshall being Red Butler, for example, with, um, mm -hmm. Patrick Fraley being a uh, buddy blue. Um, I really hope they bring Pat Fraley back. I oh, want, that would just make me so happy. I want Scott Manville. I'm sorry. I, that he, was great too. Because he does Robin on Team Titans, and I'm such a Team Titans freak. I love Team now, Titans. I haven't really watched Team Titans much. Does he still sound young when he's doing those voices? Yeah, he the character in Team Titans is only supposed to be about 12 or 13 years old. He has more of a gruffer okay. voice because he plays Robin. Um, but that's on the original Teen Titans from the early 2000s, and he's still voicing him in Teen Titans Go!, uh, which is supposed okay. to be uh, a kid. They're supposed because they're, they're teens. They're 13, 13 years old. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. he does it really good. <laughs> nice. Okay, so yeah, he could obviously still pull it off. So let's bring him back. Oh, I would uh, like to see him voice Chris. Ooh, Ooh I that would be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> we I should... wonder if he can still do the Brian voice. I mean, that was a very unique voice for a kid. Like, I watched um, Ernest Goes to Camp again the other day, because I have to watch that every few months. It's one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, he just had such a unique voice. I wonder if that's something he can just pull out at a moment's notice, or has his voice changed enough that that's difficult to do these days? I don't know. You know, I I've heard him in video games, uh, because I've heard mm -hmm. him in uh, Final Fantasy X, and I've heard him in, uh, of course, Teen Titans. He was on an episode of The Mentalist two years ago. Oh, really? I have not seen the episode though because um, you can't. Sh I couldn't stream it online. It wouldn't. It didn't have online episodes or anything, and I just missed it. And I have not ca caught it on a repeat. Ah. Uh, hmm. Scott Menville, show me YouTube. <laughs> Indeed! Yay! Okay. You found it? I thought you said we were going to Hawaii. Yep, yeah, that's him. <gasps> I'm familiar with all your tricks. That's why you're not going to get away with it. So yeah, he could absolutely pull this off. Yeah. If so he's he not too busy with his other projects. Yeah, because um... Teen Titans Go! is the newest one that is currently on... Uh, Cartoon Network um, that he does Robin mm -hmm. in. Uh, so yeah, he's still doing Robin, just a new iteration. He still does video games and and stuff like that. But yeah, I I would totally love him to be involved with the new one I, as a different character. Because yeah, that would be interesting. I can't imagine they would do. I don't know. I mean, you you say with Teen Titans. Back in 2000, they had him as this character. And then now in the new one, he's playing the same character, correct? I mean, I know that's a lot closer together. <laughs> However, but in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the newest iteration that's on Nickelodeon, they have some of the original voice cast from the 80s version, but they're playing different characters. You have the guy that played Raphael in the original 80s Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Rob Paulson. He actually plays Donatello in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, okay. So, okay, this is this is going to happen. We're just going to put this out in the universe, <laughs> and this is going to happen. <laughs> Scott Manville's going to be somebody. Uh, Pat Fraley's going to be somebody. <laughs> Bettina Bush is going to be somebody. <laughs> I want Bettina on My Little Pony. Oh, that would be awesome. Because she was Megan. Oh, Yeah. This needs to happen. I know she's really busy with the magazine um, work that she's doing right now with the... Working Mom. Oh, no, what's it called? That's it, Working Mothers. Um, I know she's busy with her family, so I I don't know if this would even be a possibility in her world right now, but 
we would certainly love it because oh, we yeah. love you, Bettina. <laughs> yes, because didn't she post on Twitter last year? She was doing some voice work with Scott Menville for uh, Ben 10. Oh, you're right. You're right. So she still is doing some. Hmm. This needs to happen. <laughs> Our wheels are spinning. <laughs> um, and I, I was just looking up Andre that did the voice of Starlight hasn't done much in the past couple of years, but maybe he would still be, you know, up for the challenge. I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody else doing Starlight. Can you? Actually, I want to see Rick D's. Rick D's. Once like a, the rainbow guy? Once upon a time. It was in the interview with that Bettina did on rainbowbright.net back in the early 2000s. She said Rick Dees was the original voice of Starlight. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> she, this is why we need Renee. She has the memory of an elephant. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yeah, it, it's there's so many unknowns. So right now we can kind of let our imaginations run wild which is fun, even if it's a little frustrating because we're also impatient mm -hmm. um, and we're anticipating what they're going to give us. But they're giving us a cartoon. How cool is that? Yay! I just, I can't squee loud enough <laughs> to show my excitement because ah. we've been hoping and praying for something like this for years. And especially when the new toys came out, we thought for sure there would be a cartoon to go along with them. And then all we got was the, the flash animation on the website. Um, we were a little bit bummed. You know, there's also, you're, you probably have this too in the back of your, your mind, a little bit of fear as well that they're not going to do it to our expectations. Um, are they going to screw it up? But you know, I, I really can't imagine they would do anything so bad that it would tarnish the name of Rainbow Bright. I'm hoping yeah. they they will keep us in mind because it is our generation which is teaching the new generation. And if we don't like it, it's not going to be shown. That's true. It's the mommies who make, or mommies and daddies, who make the decision of what gets put on the mm -hmm. tube. So, yeah. But I have been so thrilled to see so many parents passing this on to Rainbow, I mean, passing Rainbow Bright on to their children. And like we've said before, not just parents, but aunts and uncles, grandparents, teachers, anyone who has access to children, <laughs> we're all doing our part and it's working. You know, I see so many pictures on Instagram of little kids sitting there either with a, a laptop or a tablet or just watching the TV and Rainbow Bright's playing on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when Star Steelers like on Netflix, they'll cue that up and they'll watch it over and over and over. It's great. I did a, uh, a wedding photo shoot last weekend and I brought the pictures to the family this weekend. And I was sitting down with them and they're German. And mm -hmm. I was uh, mentioning um, that about the German tapes on the website. I go, do you know who Rainbow Bright is? She goes, do I know who Rainbow Bright is? My, my grandson, he tells me, Uma, I want to watch this. And what does he pick up? He picks up Rainbow Bright. <laughs> Last weekend. <laughs> that is precious. Oh, it's precious. I love it. So, and it's boys and girls. It's not yeah. just girls. I see little boys with rainbow bright dolls and sprite dolls. They're carrying them around. They're not, you know, they're not worried about this is for a particular gender, and which I think is fantastic because it's not. It's for everybody. Um so, yeah, I figure if, if they can give us a cartoon now to keep that momentum going, this is really a perfect time to do it because it's not it hasn't been dwindling. As far as I can tell, the fandom is still alive and kicking. We may not be communicating the same way that we used to, like mailing list and so forth. But you and I have both seen how many fans pick up Rainbow Bright on uh, Facebook and it's showing up daily on Instagram. I mean, look for hashtag Rainbow Bright and you're going to find thousands or if not hundreds of thousands of pictures um every halloween you know I, I spend days going through just the halloween pictures of particular years um because so many people will dress up as rainbow bright and not just rainbow they do other characters from the show too and then yeah, yeah the it, baby twink costumes are my favorite <laughs> yes oh, oh those are adorable <laughs> And you know, I actually found a vintage one the other day. Somebody dressed their kid as Twink back in the 80s. 
That's awesome. It was at least one. There may even be two. I'll have to go back and look. Um, so yeah, it's, it's obviously taken off after that one seamstress did it and took all those wonderful pictures and posted the blog post with the tutorial and everything, which is awesome. But it was not an original idea. <laughs> I'm just I'm so glad that it's picking up these days though because mm -hmm. yeah we got it we got to keep it going and I don't know about you I'm dying to see some artwork from the new show even if it's just a picture of Rainbow Bright with nothing else I just I'm curious what her new costume is gonna look like yep um I mean that that's probably the main thing what is she gonna look like obviously I want to know what everyone is gonna look like but. Yeah, I'm keeping First an eye on Hallmark.com because I'm thinking if anywhere, it's probably going to be there. Or maybe, you know, I, I've started following her on Twitter, so maybe we can get Emily will post another treat. I don't know. That uh, would be awesome. I'd love to hear, like, her audition tape or something. <laughs> Not anymore, but <laughs> her audition MP3. <laughs> um, just a little snippet, just something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so for the next few weeks, we're going to be freaking out with every little bit of information that comes to light. And we will obviously be sharing it with you guys via Facebook and Twitter and Instagram or wherever we can. So keep your eyes peeled and definitely go to thebrightcast.com because uh, we're going to post links to the stuff we've been talking about there. And I'm sure we'll come out with a new episode once we have enough new information to warrant one. <laughs> if it's just one thing, we're not going to you know, fire up the old Skype just to say, hey, guess what? We figured out the name of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, for that information, just keep track of uh, Facebook um, or even the website. Uh, check out Twitter because we will cross post on Facebook and Twitter for all that information. Um, so keep for, for little bits that come out, keep an eye on those. Um, also, and obviously, keep an eye on rainbowbright.net and rainbowbright.co.uk. <laughs> of course. And so, yes, yeah, so keep a track of us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and uh, I think you have an Instagram site now, too. Yes. Yes. Look up Rainbow Bright Net on Instagram, and I'm there posting pictures of random Rainbow Bright things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep track uh, of everything Rainbow Bright. Remember Brightcast. And until our next episode, have, have a, a rainbow, rainbow day! day.